Hello, my name is Kashmani. Excuse me, I don't know what just happened. My name is Kashmani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kashmani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll begin our lesson with problem number 63, not 64. Problem number. 63. Let's take a look at it. We are being asked to calculate simple interest earned, simple interest earned on D dollars invested at P percent. Four, four and years. Let's see what we can do. We're going to invest D dollars for a number of N years and it's going to pay us P percent per year simple interest. Let's get going, shall we? Let's start with something simple. In one year, in one year, if we were to invest $100 in one year, $100 will earn how much? Well, put in the value for P at P percent. If it happens to be, let's, put, let's pretend that P is 3. If it pays you 3 percent interest per year and if you invest $100, 3 percent, $100 will earn $3. If it's 5 percent, you will earn $5. At 7 percent, you will earn $7 on $100. Therefore, since it's P percent, we'll earn P dollars. So that's pretty straightforward, simple. If $100 earns P dollars, that in turn implies that in one year, in one year, this should say one, just in, in one year, a dollar should earn, how much should a dollar earn? Well, if, if $100 is earning P dollars, one dollar should earn one hundredth of that, P over 100, P over 100 dollars. Are we investing $100? No, we're not investing $100. Are we investing a dollar? We're not investing a dollar. We are investing D dollars. D dollars. So if $1 earns this much interest, $2 will earn twice as much, and $5 will earn five times as much. And therefore, in one year, in one year, D dollars, in one year, D dollars will earn D times as much, which is D over P times 100. That's in one year. Are we investing for one year? No, we're not investing for one year. We are investing for n years. Where is it? Right here, for n years. So if in one year we earn this much interest, then in two years we should earn twice as much. In five years we should earn five times as much. And therefore in n years, in n years, a D dollars will earn n times D times P over 100. That's your answer. Now how do we know if this answer is right? Well, simply by plugging in numbers as we always do, as we have always done. Today is our 63rd meter problem. We always verify our answer by converting this algebraic problem into a simple arithmetic problem by plugging in numbers, by solving the problem arithmetically and see if the answer that we get arithmetically is the same answer that we'll get out of this, one, this answer. Let's do this, shall we? So how much do you want to invest? Let's, let's invest $400. And how much interest should it pay? Let's, let's, let's pretend it's going to pay us 5% interest. How long do you want to invest it for? Let's invest it for 3 years. Let's invest it for 3 years. Okay, watch what happens. I'm not going to do out the work calculation. Just stay with me in the story. So $100, if you had invested $100 at 5%, $100 at 5% would earn $5. If $100 at 5% earns $5, therefore $400 should earn $20. 5 times 4, $20 for in one year. We're not investing for one year, we're investing for three years. So in one year, if it earns $20, in two years it will earn $40, and in three years it will earn $60. The correct answer is 60. The correct answer is 60. If we can get 60 out of this one, we are in business. How much is N? N is 400. How much is D? Oh, sorry, N was not 400. N was 3. So the answer that we got is this. 
n times b times p over 100. n is 3. d is 400. And p is 5 over 100. As you can see, oh, as you can see, 400 divided by 100 is just going to be 4. Two zeros are going to cancel out. 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60, which is exactly what we get here. That tells us that this answer is correct. That tells us that our answer, n times d times p over 100, is in fact the correct answer. Always a good idea to check your answer. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. The next problem we're going to do is uh, very different, nothing to do with money at all. Nothing to do with money at all. We are going to, we're going to put carpets in the room and we're going to put wallpaper in the room on the four walls. Carpets and wallpapers. Number 64. We are told that a room, a room is, is L yards long, W feet wide and H feet high. The height of the ceiling from the floor is H feet. You want to carpet it and then you want to put a wallpaper. Let's first carpet it. How many square yard of carpet? How many square yards of carpet? And if you want to do this problem yourself, you can do that. The next thing we're going to ask is next next thing we're going to ask is how many square yards of wallpaper are we going to use? Putting the wallpaper on all the four walls. In a problem like this, don't introduce the complication of real life. And this thing is a very simple scenario. There are no openings. There are no windows. There are simple four walls. There is no opening for door. Four walls. How much how much wallpaper are you going to use? Do you understand? Okay. This just purely for learning purposes. So if you want to do this problem yourself, you can pause the video and try it out yourself. How many square yards of carpet? How many square yards of carpet do we need? Well, what's the, what's the area of the room? We know it is length, length times width. The area of a rectangle is length times width. Length we know is y yards. That's very straightforward. The problem is, the problem is width is expressed in terms of feet. In terms of feet. We have to express in terms of square yards, so we have to convert this width, uh, width into f into yards before we can progress, before we can, we can before we can continue. We know there are three feet in the yard, three feet in one yard. Since there are three feet in one yard, however number of feet we have in order for us to convert those feet into yard, we just divide it by three. If you have six 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 feet, that's two yards. Thirty feet, that's ten yards. So W feet is simply W over three. Yeah, that's it, we're done. That's it, we're done. Yard times yard is going to give us our square yards and L times W over 3 square yards. That's it, we're done. That's the answer. How much carpet do we need? We need L times W over 3 square yards. Let's figure out how much wallpaper we need. And th that's going to be a little bit more complicated. As I said, do it out yourself. You'll get more out of it that way if you want to do that. How many? square yards of wallpaper. How many square yards of wallpaper? So we're going to look at two walls. This wall right here and then another wall right here. Let's put it like this. And we're going to multiply both of this quantity by 2 because this wall is facing another wall. Let's put it a little bit differently because their dimensions look very similar. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer so it's easier to see that they are of the different... This is the length. This is the width. Do you understand? So how long is the, how long is the room? The length is y yard, uh, L yards. L yards. How high is the, from, from the floor to the ceiling? It's h feet. h feet. Again, we have a complication of feet and yard getting mixed up. We'll get to that in a second. So what's the area of this wall going to be? The area is going to be this This how long it is. L yards times H feet, which is H over 3 
yards, which is going to give us L times H over 3 square yards. That's not, that's not all. We have to multiply this quantity by 2. We need to multiply this quantity by 2 because this wall faces on the wall of the same dimension on the opposite side. So it's times 2. So we took care of this, we took care of this wall. Now we're going to take care of that wall. How deep is this wall? Right here, W feet. W feet. And how tall is this wall? Well, this wall, of course, is the same height as this wall, obviously, it's the same room. H feet. So here, they are both being expressed in feet. We need to convert both of them into square yards in order to measure in order to measure the the area of this wall. The area of this wall. W feet, it's going to be W over 3 yard times H feet, which is H over 3 yard times 2. This times 2 is outside. We're going to multiply. In that case, we need one more bracket actually. I need to insert one more bracket outside. I'm going to erase this two so that I can squeeze my bracket in there. This quantity is being multiplied by two and this quantity is being multiplied by two because this wall also faces another wall of the same dimension. That's it, we're done. All we have to do is simpl simplify this thing. We already simplify this thing, L times H over three. Let's put this two outside. L times, L, L times H over three, we have that, square yards. Now let's figure out what that is. I need to erase this part, obviously. And here we have W times H. W times H over 3 times 3, which is 9 square yards. This is being expressed in terms of square yards, and this is being expressed in terms of square yards. Or we put down square yards, the units outside. That's it. We can't leave it like this. We can't leave this in, in, in such an ugly form here. We need to we need to be able, we need to present this thing in a little bit more elegant way. We need to simplify this thing. And the rule of simplification tells us that if there is a common factor, we need to take it out. H is the common factor here. H appears here, and H appears here. We need to take it outside. So we take 2 times H, which leaves us with L plus W. Ah, but you see, this, this has a denominator of 3 and this one has a denominator of 9. So I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by 3 so that they both have a denominator of 9. So now it's L times 3. So it's 3L. It's 3L plus W over 9 square yards. There is your final answer. Your final answer is 2 times H. times 3 times L plus W over 9. Now, even if you did not do this problem, even if you did not do, do, did, not, did not do this problem on your own to begin with, after having watched the video, it's not, a, it's not a bad idea actually to try to do it yourself now. Now you know how it is done, see if you can reproduce the work, if you understand the concept, if you understand the logic, if you understand the steps, that's the whole point. You want to be able to solve, you want to be able to solve algebra word problems. And being able to solve algebra word problem means being able to concentrate and being able to follow the steps logically, rationally, in their proper sequence. That was the end of my sermon. Amen.